Let's solve this. Destroy your property comes first. Okay. Six plus two x plus six. Oh, okay. this is the problem you guys were talking about. So let's combine like terms on the right side, and we get two x plus twelve. <coughs> Notice that this and this is the same, right? So let's say x equals five. Well. If x equals 5, the left side is going to be 10, and the right side is going to be 10 as well, right? But on the left side, I'm going to subtract 10, and the right side, I'm going to add 10, which makes this side, right, no matter what I multiply 2 by, uh, on, on this side, I'm subtracting, and this side, I'm adding. So whatever value this is, I'm moving that way on the number line, whatever value this is, the 2 times whatever x is, what am I doing to its product? I'm adding 12, so I'm going to be going that way. So you will notice that in, if, if that if that happens always, right? Uh, you're multiplying x by 2, and then one you're subtracting, you'll make it a uh, what do you call it? a smaller value, and the other one an increasing value. Will this always be true, right? So it doesn't matter what, what values for x will satisfy in this quality. Would be x belongs to all real numbers, right? That would be a solution. Any value of x would make that inequality true. Uh, let's see. Negative times a positive is a negative. 4, that's 8x plus 4. That's 3 equal to 5x minus 9. Um, let's see. Where is the variables on both sides? So let's do plus 8x plus 8x. Goes away. We get 5. That's 3 equal to 13x minus 9. We add 9 to both sides. And we get, what is this, 13, and this goes away, 13x, and divide by 13 on both sides, right? So we get 1 less or equal to x. Let's graph that. So 1 is, that says that 1, first of all, 1 is part of the solution. So 1 is less or equal to every single number uh, to the right or to the left of it. Obviously, it would be to the right. right? So if you pick a number, so let's say you pick 100. Plug it in here. Does it work? Is one less than a hundred? Yeah. So, where's a hundred? To the right or the left? To the right of one or to the left of one? A hundred is to the right of one. So, that tells you that number is to the right. Work. And then again, if you don't believe me, pick a number here on the negative side. Plug it in for x. See if it works. You'll notice that it doesn't, which means numbers on this side of one do not um, do not work. Hmm. All right, uh, what is this? Write a solution set. So this one is, I guess, your x, our x values are between negative 2 and 3, not inclusive on the 3, but inclusive on negative 2. So we can go negative 2, x, right? It can be, and then less than 3. And then this would be x is less than 1 or x is greater than 4. x cannot be these numbers here, x can't be 2, 3, 1.5, 1.6, 3.99, but x can be anything less than 1 or greater than 4. All right, so the age of a tree is seven, at least 70 years, so the tree, and I'm going to use the A for age, and 70 over here, so the age of the tree is greater than 70 or equal to 70. At least 70, that's what it means. It could be 70. The rent is no less than 400 per month. So my rent every month, I'm going to use R, is no less than 400. So that means it's not less than 400. No less than, so the bare minimum, right? So I have to pay 400 for sure or more. Price of the book is at most $10.95. So it doesn't go over that. So the book. And here's 1095. So can the book be 1095? Yeah. Can it be anything less than 1095? Also, yeah. So there's the inequality sign. Her time in the 5K rate was no more than 40 minutes. Okay. So her time was less than 40 minutes or even less than 40 minutes. No more than 40. You must be more than 40 inches tall to ride the Ferris wheel. So your height, and let, or let's use height. You have to be greater than 40. If you're 40, can you ride the Ferris wheel? No, you can't. So you have to be 
the height has to be greater than 40. Alright, so, again, not saying you here. <clears throat> Alright, yellow cab. So this is probably a two-step inequality, it looks like. So you walk in, get into the cab. Here's what you start with. You start by paying 275. And then you're going to pay 0 0.65 for each mile. Emma has no more than $14, so all that you're paying, you're paying the 275 for, for the ride plus the 65 cents per mile. That has to be less or equal to 14. So, because Emma doesn't have any more money, so if it's any, if it comes out to be 14.01, she can't pay for it. So, how many miles can she ride without ex exceeding her spending limit? So, that's what we're looking for. Well, minus 275, minus 275. 0.65m, we're going to subtract 14 minus 2.75, and that's uh, something, 11.25. We divide both sides by 0 0.65. So the number of miles that she can, uh, what do you call, travel here would be 0 0.65. Note self by a new calculator, 11.25 divided by... 0.65 equals 17.30. Or if you round it to the nearest hundreds, I'm going to leave it at 17.31. So, sorry, sorry, forgot this. Now, <clears throat> this is miles we're talking about. Right, can you actually drive 17.31 miles? Yeah, you can. So on the number line, right, so your answer in the context of this story um, is this shaded and that way there it is it, it is possible it's mileage I mean when you're driving right you don't have to you don't have to drive full whole miles you can have <coughs> partial miles okay so this is not the same as how many boxes can you carry right so if the maximum number of boxes he can carry was 17.31 obviously uh, we would use 17 because you can't carry 17.31 boxes right so that makes sense in the context of that but in the context of us driving, 17.31 is just completely fine. Two, what is this? The length of a rectangle? So let me draw this. The rectangle. The length is four. So here's the width. The rectangle, the length is four more than the width. The perimeter is no more than 28. What is the maximum possible direction for the rectangle. So, so the perimeter would be two times L plus well. Let me make it simple. Let me write W here, four plus W. So it's saying that the perimeter, if I add all four sides, right? So I don't know if you want to write it like this, right? Two times and two times W, or you could have just written one full. 4 plus W, 4 plus W, plus W, plus W, this is fine too. No more than 28, so the sum of this has to be less or equal to 28. So let's solve this. We get 8 plus 2W plus 2W. Sorry, I forgot the W. Less than 28. We get 8 plus 4W less than 28. Less or equal to 28. Minus 28, minus 28. 4w less or equal to 20, divide both sides by 4, and w is less or equal to 5. So, if the width is 5, right, means that the length here is 4 plus 5, which makes it 9. So the maximum, right, would be this. So if I have 5, imagine this would be 5, and this would be 9, so 5 and 5 is 10, plus 18 is 20, so that would be the maximum dimensions. What are the dimensions? Possible maximum possible dimensions for the rectangle. Width is five. Length is nine. So that's what we're looking for. So two consecutive integers. Okay. So x and x plus one. X. So two consecutive integers is less than fifty-five. Plus x plus one. So we have two consecutive integers is less than fifty-five. Find the pair of integers with the greatest sum. So let's solve this. 2x plus 1 is less than 55, minus 1, minus 1, I get 2x less than 54, right, so that's going away. Divide by 2, divide by 2, 
and x is less than 27. So it has to be an integer, right? So I can't use 27. So um, the, the, the two, uh, the, the greatest two integers that I can use would be 26 and 25. Right? So. <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, x equals 26, sorry. 26 and 27. Right? Because the biggest integer under 27 that I can use is 26. So I can use 26 and 27, and that gives me 53. Those are, those are the two highest consecutive integers. Right? Because if I use 27 and 28, right? 26 plus 27 is 53. So if you decide, well, let's see if I can use 27 and 28. Can I use 27 and 28? No, because if I add them, I get 55. And can I use 55? No, because it says it has to be less than 25. So the two greatest integers would be 26 and 27. The sum of two consecutive even integers, all right, so in this case it's x and x plus 2, is at most 400. So x plus x plus 2 is at most, so it's no greater than 400. Can it be 400? Yeah. So 2x plus 2, that's uh, equal to 400, minus 2, minus 2, 2x plus or equal to 398, by both sides by 2, and x equals less than 398. What's that? 398. Let's self-find the calculator. 398 divided by 2, we get 199. So, what is the greatest, uh, what do you call, where am I? Even integer under 199 would be 198. And if x is 198, the next one would be 200. And if you add that, we get 398. All right, could we, I, could we have used 200? Could the smaller even integer have been 200? Well, if the smaller integer was 200, one right after that would be 202. Could I have used these two? No, because the sum of that is greater than 400. So these are your two numbers. Right, nice little problems, right? These are three consecutive odd integers. So we have x, x plus 2, and x plus 4. It's no less than 51. So x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 4. <clears throat> is uh, no less than 51, so it has to be greater than 51. So if we add this, we have 3x plus 6 greater than 51. Um, we have minus 6 and minus 6. That goes away, 3x is greater than 45. So divide both sides by 3, x equals 15. So let's see, if we have 15, this would be 17, and would be 19. Um, King C minus the search minus the nov equals 51. Um, sorry, Oop, I think I forgot that. So 15 is definitely fine. Okay, because uh, I forgot the equal sign here. Okay, so here are your three consecutive odd integers. Six. Find two consecutive integers, so x, x plus one, such that seven times the smaller, so seven times the smaller, is less than is less than seven times the smaller is less than six times the greater. There you go. We got seven x less. 6x plus 6, we're going to take minus 6 on both sides, 
and we're going to get x less than 6. So um, has to be less than 6, consecutive integer. So let's say, well, we can use 6, so the, this would be 5 and 6, right, because um, x plus 1 is 6, so 5 and 6. So let's try that in this sentence. 7 times the smaller, 7 times 5, is less than 6 times the greater. Well, 7 times 5 is 35, and 6 times 6 is 36. Yeah, there you go. So the two numbers is 5 and 6. <clears throat> there are three exams in the marking period. Ryan received 85, 91 on the first. What grade? So 85 plus 91 on the first two exams. Right? What grade must he earn on this exam in order to get an average of no less than 90? So it has to be <coughs> greater than. Uh, we're taking the average. Remember, we're. How do we take the average? We divide by, we add all the add-ins, and then we divide by the number of numbers that we're adding. So, so this, right? So what does he need to get on that third test so that when we do the average, right, divide by 3 in this case, because there's three tests, it has to be greater or equal to 90. Well, let's do this. So the next step, right, so if you want clear the denominator, you can multiply this by 3 and multiply this by 3. That goes away, that goes away, and we get 270 over here. 85 plus 91 is 6, and 176 plus x, greater or equal to 270, minus 176, minus 176. That goes away. x has to be greater or equal to, I have no idea what that is, 270 minus 176 which is 94. So he has to get a 94 or higher to have an average of at least a 90. So let's see if that's true. So he got 85 in the first, 91 in the second. So let's say he gets 94 on the third, and then we divide that by 3. So 85 plus 91 plus 94 equals 270. And if you divide by 3, look, you get exactly a 90. Now, uh, I'm going to go back, All right? So now, one way of doing that was to multiply both sides by 3, right? So that's what we talked about, clearing the denominator. But if you think about it, that's another explanation for that. All right? So that's a fraction, and this is not a fraction. So you want to find common denominators, right? So if you find common denominator, the common denominator is, is 3. So let me put this over 1, by the way. 91 plus x. So if you want to make everybody have a common denominator, that one becomes a 3, so we need to find the equivalent uh, fraction of 90 over 1 when it's written in as, uh, as, as a denominator of 3. So it's times 3, times 3 is 2, 7. Right? And then again, now if you clear the denominators and multiply that side, the, everybody by 3, doesn't this and this and this all go away? And you're left with 85 plus 91 plus x is greater or equal to 270. So, uh, however you want to think about it, uh, it, it's fine. Okay, so rectangle. So again, the length of a rectangle. So here's a rectangle. Is length of rectangle is five centimeters less than twice the width. So twice the width. Oops. So the width is just the width. But the length is twice the width minus 5. And there we go. Right? Remember, the word's less than, so we have to make a little switcheroo there. If the perimeter of the rectangle is no more than 70, can it be 70? Yeah, but can it be more than 70? No. So here is my inequality. What are the possible dimensions? Well, again, the perimeter is all, those, uh, all the sides added together. Let's just add it. Uh, w plus W plus 2W plus W, we get 6W, negative 5, negative 5 is negative 10. Plus 10 on both sides. And uh, that goes down 6W less or equal to, what is this, 80? Um, 80 divided by 
six plus give me another. Ah, why don't you give me five less than twice? Twice, I can't say twice. Uh, twice the width. Did I do this right? Five less than twice the width, or two w minus five, two w minus five. What am I doing wrong? Um, it's no more than seventy, so it can't pass seventy. So well, I guess we can leave it as a fraction, but uh, uh, two w two four by six. So I don't know, let me just write this out. Sorry, guys. Plus two w less or equal to seventy, right? That's 2w, this is 4w minus 10. You still get 6w minus 10 less or equal to 70 plus 10 on both sides. You get the same answer. All right, I mean, I don't remember the answers to these. So we divide both sides by 6. Okay, I guess I'm right. Uh, w is, and let me write that. Uh, 12, 72, no, sorry, 13, 13 and two and one third. So the width is 13 and one third, which means the the width was going to be two times 13 and one third minus five. Oof. 26 and two thirds. So let me just. Going to be 21, so the width is going to be 20, the length is going to be sorry, 21 and 2 thirds. So those are my two measurements length and the width, uh, 13 and 1 third, I think. Okay, let me correct me if I'm wrong. Nine, the length of a rectangle again, the length. The width is just a width, apparently. Four, four more than three times the width. So there is the length. The perimeter is more than 56, so all that. So if I add all four sides, it's going to give more than 56. So let's just add them. 3, 6, 7, 8. We get 8w plus 8 minus 8 on both sides. And uh, what is this? 6, 8, 48. We get 8w divided by. Uh, Eight by, uh, divide 8w by 8 and 48 by 8, and we get w has to be greater than 6. What are the ma what are the minimum possible dimensions to the record? The minimum is not allowing for fractional sign measure. Uh, all right, so the minimum so the minimum integer so we can't have six and we can't use six and a half or six and one third because of this. So the bare minimum would be w would be seven. So the width is seven, which means the length would be four plus three times seven, which is twenty one, and plus four. So the, here are the smallest possible dimensions given this fact. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Uh, number eight's bothered me a little bit. Oh, if I figure out if I made a mistake, I'll update.